In this video, I'm going to share with you an advanced method on how to improve your DJ sets using Ableton. I just finished watching the masterclass from Armin von Buren, and he claims to be using this technique to prepare his Tomorrowland DJ sets. And he's using it on every single track. And today I'm going to teach this technique to you. What's up everybody, welcome to my new channel. This channel is for beginner and intermediate DJs looking to improve their DJing skills. My artist name is Dorian and I'm a DJ and producer based in Zurich, Switzerland. I'm pretty sure you are aware of current developments leading to cancelled events and therefore gigs. However, this doesn't mean that you should stop creating. Use the time to work on your craft and to get better so that when all of this is over, you'll come out swinging. So how can you improve your sets? One thing you can do is making your sets more dynamic in the perception of people, especially if you're warming up for the headliner or even more important, if you're the headliner, you have to make sure that you keep the people engaged. One mistake I see DJs do in this context is playing the full length of a track or playing a track which has a too long and too quiet breakdown. By doing this too often, your sets are going to be too static and won't really engage and warm up the crowd enough. And there are a couple of solutions to that. You could simply make a transition in the middle of the track. And I see many DJs do that, and I do that too from time to time. Um, however, this won't always work, as in many cases, the best part of this song comes only later in the track, and maybe the, the key of the track that you're playing and the, the key of the track that you're transitioning to, they don't match at all. The solution I'll be teaching you today is to prepare and cut tracks before so that you only keep the parts you really want. So in a second, I will show you directly in Ableton how I do that. First, I'm going to quickly go through the track and assess what parts I want to keep and which I want to delete. Second step is actually to delete parts that I don't want. Now, sometimes you'll have an issue with that as the transition will sound too abrupt, uh, as if they were cut. We don't want that. It should sound very, very smooth, even though we did cut something out. And the third step is to tweak those transitions which actually do sound a bit too harsh. Now we'll see, maybe we will do that third step today, maybe not, maybe this is something for a different video. I just want to say that if it sounds too harsh, you can use some elements like swooshes, risers, impacts, or even playing stuff in your on your MIDI keyboard to make it sound more pleasant. Note that this technique requires some very basic music production skills. Um, that's also the reason I'm saying that this is a slightly advanced method. However, let me say that if you're a DJ, you also should get into music production as this will make you a better DJ. So without further ado, let's go into Ableton and do this. All right, welcome to Ableton. As you can see, I already inserted my track here. It is a deep house track, a groovy deep house track from Gab Rome and Mark Allo called Bob Fossil. I sometimes play that in my sets, especially in the beginning. It is a track that seven and a half minutes long, so it's very long. So it's actually the perfect track to show you how to cut a couple of things in order to make it a bit shorter. Only by looking at it, I can, I can say that the intro is very long. So the intro is probably until here and then the first breakdown comes and then probably only here the bass line kicks in. Then we have another breakdown, the long breakdown starting here until here and then it kicks in again. It probably goes on for a couple of minutes, from one to two minutes here, which is kind of the main part probably and then the outro around here. As I told you, the first step is to, to go through and assess 
um, which parts I want to keep, which parts I want to delete. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to go to, through the track and then pause and tell you what I think uh, so that you can follow. Let's start. see that all of this that I played right now is still the intro obviously great for the DJ as he can use this part to mix in this track but I, I really don't need that first part because it's very quiet and if you're in a loud environment and you start with this you probably will have uh, some difficulties mixing it in so what I'm gonna do is already get rid of this part as you can see i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna do that again so i'm just marking this here with my mouse like holding clicking holding so now it's marked i can just press delete and then grab this here and put it to the beginning and then i can play it again so now it would start like this which already helps you with mixing it in because you have it's a bit louder and you have a little bit more percussion going on so it's easier to to beat match let's go further So this part here and this part here, they are very, very similar. So I don't really see the point in having both in the track. So I'm going to try uh, to delete the first part, which is this one here. And then put this next to this one and let's see how it sounds. Sounds all right. What do you think? I think there is nothing, it's not too harsh. Um, there's nothing going on before that suddenly stops um, when this other part comes in or vice versa. So there's nothing coming in which is too harsh, which wasn't there at all before. So it, it sounds really, it sounds smooth. It sounds seamless, like a seamless transition to me. So that's fine. So we have a couple of, um, we have like one minute or so going on here, one and a half and then we're going going to take a look at the break Don't get me wrong, it's a very, very nice break. And if I played that in the beginning of my sets, then I would totally leave the whole break as is. However, if I decided to, to play that track a bit later in my set, then this breakdown would be, in my opinion, would be too long. Like you will lose the crowd, you will lose the groove if, if you play the whole breakdown. Because it is very, it is very beautiful, but it is also it calms you down. It calms you down, 
And so what I would try is to to kind of shorten it a bit. Um, I already have something in mind. Um, I would try to to actually put the second this second part underneath the first part here, maybe starting here, so that we lose a couple of or win a couple of seconds. So let me try to do that. I'm gonna select the whole thing here and try to drag it down exactly like this and then again grab it and let me see where I should put this. Let me put it here. So what I'm going to do now is fade this one out and you can just you see that thing here? You can just grab it and move it. And these waves here, as you can see, get more silent. And maybe I'll do a little, little fade in here so it doesn't sound too harsh coming in, but just a little bit. And then let's see. I'm going to also modify that just a bit. And let's now see how that sounds. Hey guys, before we continue, if you're getting value out of this video so far, can you please give it a thumbs up? It would mean the world to me. Thank you so much and let's continue. Sounds good, doesn't it? Um, the the artist could have done it that way, right? So you wouldn't, you don't think this sounds this sounds weird. I'm gonna stop here because I think you get the idea. Um, it's right now I was very very lucky because when I deleted something, it didn't sound too harsh, right? It fit right in. What I could do in the next video is show you a transition that in the beginning or at first sounds very, very harsh, but then um, we can modify that. So adding some elements like swooshes and impacts and um, if, so just sound effects, maybe even play something in with the MIDI keyboard um, in the same key, of course. So if you found this helpful, please hit that subscribe button as I'll be sharing a lot more tips and tricks going forward that might help you improve your skills. Please let me know in the comments below what I should talk about in the next videos. Also feel free to comment about your tips on how to improve a DJ set. So thank you very much and see you next time.